you sigh. You are tired? Mm, a little. Patience, patience. So. 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 Ah, it's finished. Poor Paul. You work too hard. I work to capture your pale pink soul. To fix it for all time on that canvas. Ah, it is you, Claire. It is the real you. It is my masterpiece. It's wonderful, Paul. May I take it straight home? I'm sure Daddy will buy it. He's so interested in art. 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 Don't use that word in the same breath on the same day that you mentioned that Paul Darcy. But Claire thinks it's art. Claire doesn't think. Oh, I wish she was back in school. I wish there was no spring vacation. I wish that... We could send her to Joe's for a couple of weeks. Splendid. Good old Uncle Joe. Nobody could be around him long and go for that modern stuff of all the silly, nonsensical... Mother? Dad? Look, it's finished. Finished? How can you tell? Oh, not that way. You've got my pale pink soul standing on its head. You don't want me upside down, do you? Well, you're a big girl, but uh, don't put any ideas in my head. Claire, dear. How would you like us to give you a trip on your vacation? A trip? Where? How do your Uncle Joe's in Baysville. But, Mother, I definitely... Bring your soul doubly in the country. And your Uncle Joe would be just delighted to have you. Why, he hasn't seen you in, in nearly eight years. But, Mother, start packing, Claire. I'll write to Joe this very minute. I hate to do this to her, but still, it's for her own good. It's Baysville. Anybody can tell you where Joe Butterfield lives. Listen, Paul, you must drive out and rescue me. Baysville isn't such a bad place, honey. After all, that's where I found your mother. A 
And now, ladies, we bring you another in a series of talks by Gloria Love on reducing the hip. Do you want to have the kind of figure that... piece of baling wire and one of these days I'm going to fix that thing. Well, Joe, here, you forgot to bring in your mail. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm getting old. Thanks, Bill. Let me, boys, let's see what my sister Margaret had to say. Hey, Dick, there's an article in here you ought to read. It's called How to Make the Most of Your Time. What do you think of that? Bad news, Joe? Hey, well, it is and it ain't. Hey, what's come over you? Oh, don't bother me. I'm busy. What's got into Joe? I'm in for a little trouble, I guess. Trouble, Joe? What kind of trouble? Looks like I'm going to have company. Who? Well, who's coming? My niece, Claire. You'll remember Claire. You made life miserable for her when she was here eight or nine years ago. Wait, I got a picture of her. I sort of remember her. Yeah, sure. Here she is. Oh, sure, I remember her. Yeah, see. Not much to look at, but she's got Butterfield blood in her veins. Uh, we won't hold that against her. Boy, was she freckled. Let me see. Sure is skinny. Remember, we called her Freddy Cat. Yeah, but she took all our kidding. When's she coming? Let's see. Claire will arrive. Now, that would be... Well, that's nice. Tonight. 
Fake shots. Get out of here. No music now. I got a million things to do. Oh, Go on. I wonder if Claire is as skinny as she used to be. Skinny as she used to be. Skinny as she used to be. I wonder if Claire is skinny as she used to be many long years ago. Many long years ago. Let's go meet that train. Yeah, we might as well. Well, let's go. I got to do it. That's all there is to it. I just got to. You gotta help me. Well, first you gotta help me put up this curtain. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. You know it's mighty handy having a man around the house once in a while. <laughs> remember what I asked you more than twenty years ago? Uh, no, I don't quite remember. What was it? I ain't going through all that now. Besides, that isn't what I'm here for. Oh, uh, you said you wanted me to help you. What is it? It's Claire. Claire, Meg's girl. What's happened to her? Nothing, but she's coming out here for a visit. Well, is that all? Isn't that enough? Meg is sending her out here to get her away from some crazy artist or painter or something. She expects me to straighten her out. I don't know nothing about girls. <laughs> yes, I remembered you didn't. Oh, but you will help me, please, won't you, Julie? Oh, of course I will. Where is this painter fella? Is he young? I've always wanted to meet a painter. You know, they're always so sort of exciting. <laughs> Julie, there is no painter. Well, you just said there was a painter. Claire's coming here, not the painter. Well, Claire is a sweet child. Yes, and I got to get ready for her. And tonight, too. Well, I haven't been in your house in 20 years, and I guess there's plenty to do. Just a minute while I get my coat. This is my kitchen, you know. You won't find anything wrong here. Well, what on earth is this? Now, now, Julie. That's one of my inventions. Come on, you go right on in the front room. This can be Claire's room with a folding bed. I'll move into the back bedroom. Well, everything looks just the same. Certainly it does. I like to keep everything the same. That is, about everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, a man is handy around the house. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I think I'd put that chair over there, and then that huh? one there. That... Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, just a minute, just a minute. Now, come to think of it, I, I think that's a little too large there. I, no, I'd put it back there. Just leave it the way it was. But I tell you what I would do. I'd move that over there and then put that big table there in the Great center. Great shuts. It's nearly train time and I've got to drop you off at home. Come on. Well, I must say, Joe, you're a better housekeeper than I thought. Hey, who do you suppose that is? Mm-hmm. Could I go for her? Say, hey, she's got an accordion with her. Yeah, she looks like an actress or musician. Of course, that couldn't be Claire. <laughs> Where is she? Nobody got off that looked like her. She must have missed the train. Well, this one girl got off, and that wasn't Claire. Uncle Joe! Oh! Come on, boy. <laughs> My. My little girl certainly has grown up. Well, you look just the same and just as swell. Oh, some of the boys you used to know, remember? I think so. This is Bob, who used to call me Spindleshank. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I, I didn't. And this is Skinny, who used to crawl under the porch and mew like a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that anymore. And this is Dick, who always had a garter snake in his pocket. And this is... Let me see... This is Willie. Willie's a banker's son. Should we go home now, Uncle Joe? 
That's just what we'll do. You boys can bring Claire's things. What's this your mother writes me about some young painter fella? Tell me, Uncle Joe, do you like art? Art? Don't think I know him. She used to be so skinny and covered with freckles. Time certainly marches on. That's the way it usually is, except on the 4th of July. Well, anyway, the air smells good. It's fresh and clean. Same smell as always. Nothing new. You know, it's rather nice to be here again, Uncle Joe, for a little visit. It's nice having you again, but what's wrong with living here? Well, I guess it's all right if you've never lived in the city. Hey, careful with that accordion. I'm being careful. Do you suppose she can really play it? Boy, oh, I'd be swell if she could. Well, of course she can play it. What do you think she likes it around for, the exercise? Those rambling Romeos putting her being his home. Come on in. That was pretty slick the way you handled them at the depot. Might as well take them right on in the front room. That's where Claire's going to stay. Come on. Where will you be? I'm in the back bedroom. Great stud. You've never seen my invention for opening up the folding bed, have you? So you're still in Danny. <laughs> but you don't want to open the bed now. No, of course not. Claire just got here. She'd like to visit a while. Yeah, at least wait till company goes. Well, the company's leaving right now. Good night. Yeah. Come on, Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> They're up to something. You mark my words. But anyway, I'm going to show you how my new invention works. I said to myself, said I, why not make the front room into a bedroom so it won't be wasted space at night? So. Here she goes. Rascals and rowdies, that's what they are. Blame them. Gosh, I wish we hadn't have done it now. Yeah, did you hear Claire scream? I hope we didn't get in bad with her. How'd we know she was coming? Yeah, and gonna be that kind of a girl. I used to call her spindle shanks. No more freckles now. No. So long, fellas. Bye, Bye Bill. Long, Bill. Goodbye, Willie. All right, you overstuffed porch crawler. Mornings are never like this at home. And did I sleep last night? Maybe you'll come to like it here after all. Birds. What are they so excited about? They're just happy because they're out here in the country. There's sunshine, trees, fresh air, plenty of elbow room to raise their young ones. Well, they're certainly making a lot of noise about it. Well, I gotta go finish my chores. Well, I'll do the dishes. Don't you touch them till I get back. I got my own way of doing that job. knows how to run it. That's my automatic dishwasher. Stand over there and I'll show you how it works. Now I know what you mean, Uncle Joe, when you say great sud.
Pretty slick, eh? You don't have to buy silk stockings for it. And it don't talk back to you, either. Give me a piece of damn wire, and I'm going to fix that thing one of these days. Yes, before it kills you. And me, too. I'm sorry, Mrs. Jordan, but we simply can't extend the note again. Then I shan't have a mortgage anymore. That's good, isn't it? Well, not exactly. You understand, of course, that the bank doesn't want your place. Of course not. This would be a very bad location for a bank. And you also know that the money we loaned you was not the bank's money. Why, Mr. Jones, you mean you did that for me? All I mean, my dear lady, is that the money belongs to our customers. Well, who are they? Is somebody I know? Perhaps I should talk to them. Well, I can't say exactly. You, uh, you see... Uh... Why, Mr. Jones, you mean you didn't keep track of their money that they put in the bank? Why, of course we did. We know exactly each customer's balance, but we can't keep their money separate. You mean it's all mixed up? Well, really, Mr. Jones, if you don't mind my saying so, I think it's a very peculiar way to run a bank. But really, Mrs. Jordan... Oh, I'm sure you'll try to do better in the future. But, Mrs. Jordan... It'll seem rather strange to be without a mortgage, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. Well, I certainly hope you can work something out. Oh, don't you worry about me, Mr. Jones. And I'm going to try to pay all those customers back. Why, the idea of you using their money to lend to somebody else, perhaps to strangers. Really, Mr. Jones, I... But it isn't a strange... I mean, it, it... I mean, I don't know who they are. I... Well... I'll bid you good day, Miss Jordan. Well, do think over what I've said, Mr. Jones. Yes, uh, yes. Good day. Good day. Don't forget the dainty foam program on this station tonight at 8 o'clock. Write the last line of a limerick and win a cash prize. Morning, Dick. My dad asked me to come over and see if there's anything I could do to help you. Well, that's mighty kind of him. Hello, Dick. Hello, Claire. Dick, come over. Well, now. Morning, Joe. Yeah, good morning. My father thought I'd better see if there was something I could do to help you out. Hello, Claire. Hello? Thought you were going to help your mother clean house today. Yeah, that's what you told us. My father wanted me to ask if he needed me today. Well. Fine friends I've got, haven't I, Claire? I should say you have. And here comes another one of Uncle Joe's willing little helpers. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. Hello, Uncle Joe. Bill was going to be too busy today to go fishing. Well, you see... I know, Bill. Somebody sent you over and you all want to help me out. Yeah. Well, now, that's just fine. Dick, you take the new tractor and finish plowing the back 40. Skinny, you clean out the cow barn and bring in the bedding. You mow the yard. Be sure and rake and trim it. Bill, you got a good strong back. You hold the garden. It's getting pretty weedy. Claire and I will get in the car and take a little ride. We'll be back by supper. I guess the garden is kind of weedy. Finish the back 40? But I got my good clothes on. Oh, so have I. Gee, Seems to me the whole lot of you are kind of dressed up. Couldn't be that you came over to help me out with Claire, could it? Well, maybe that was the idea. <laughs> I thought so, but it didn't come to me at first. All right, you fellas. Go ahead and entertain her. I'll do the work. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> When Joe hurt his leg, we did all the chores for more than a week. Yeah, Claire, it wouldn't be the first time we've pissed in to help. A lot of help they'd be today. Some of these days, you watch. I'm going to fix that. Well, who wouldn't be scared? You boys haven't changed a bit. <laughs> what did that sign mean? Who's the widow? Well, she was an old sweetheart of Joe's. Yeah, and he's still kind of sweet on her. Anyhow, he reddens up and we get him about her. <laughs> she married some man named Jordan. He died years ago. Yeah, now she lives alone in town. Wait a minute. Not Julia Jordan. Yeah. yeah, that's her name. Why, I know her. I used to call her Aunt Julia. She was my mother's best friend when they were girls. Well, I must see her. Well, why not go right now? I'll take you in my car. Well, what about them? Well, Joe's got work for them to do. Didn't you hear him ask for it? Come on. What a pal. Well, she didn't even give us a chance. The kidnapper. 
Bill and I are going over to see Aunt Julia. What? Well, you run right along. I know she'll be mighty glad to see you. Back soon. Keep your helpers busy. Hey, fellas. How about coming over tonight after supper and we'll have a little music? You know, Claire brought her accordion. Oh, hey, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, You're yeah, fat. Have a date, boy. I guess Mrs. Jordan's in sort of a tough spot. In what way, Bill? Well, I heard Dad tell Mother last night that she's got a note at the bank and she might lose her place. Well, that's terrible. Can't we do something about it? Well, we can't rob the bank to pay off the mortgage. Well, we've simply got to help her. What we need is an idea. Aunt Julia. Clara Day, it's good to see you. <laughs> oh. Why, standing there, you're the living image of your dear mother. Oh, well, thanks, Aunt Julia. You couldn't say anything sweeter. Mother's a peach. And you don't mind if I go on with my painting, do you? No, of course you don't. You love painting. Well, now, sit down. Oh, well, I've only got a minute. Oh. Well, how have you been, Aunt Julia? Oh, just fine. And... How about your mother? How is she? Oh, perfect as usual. Dad, too. Oh, I always use his dainty foam soap. <laughs> and I suppose listen to his radio program. It's tonight, you know. At 8 o'clock. I never miss it. I just love those cute little limericks. There's our idea. Well, Clara, have you got an idea? What about? Oh, I was just... I hope you don't get to run along now, Aunt Julia. Bill Jones is waiting for me, but I'll be back again real soon. Well, now, come in any time. We'll have a nice, long visit. Bill, did you ever write poetry? Poetry? Who, me? No. Well, you're going to start tonight. Why? Well, Aunt Julia must win Dad's limerick contest. We simply can't let her lose her home. Are you beginning to see how people might want to live here? Of course. As a matter of fact, it's grand in the country. As a matter of fact, it's grand in this whole country. You're strictly on the beam. Very smooth squeeze box, if you ask me. Gee, Claire, you're really solid. You're not so bad yourself, Bill. What is this, a mutual admiration society? Let's get going. How about Beautiful Dreamer for a starter? Beautiful oh, Dreamer. See, give out, Uncle Joe. Yeah. Thank you. 
Now, you're playing jokes, too. Oh, Daddy's program. My father has a program. Well, certainly, he owns the Danny Foam Soap Company. That's it now. Come on in, everybody. The program's almost over. of this week's winner in the Dainty Foam Limerick Contest. $1,000 goes to Mrs. Della Whitmarsh of Fowler, North Dakota. Congratulations, Mrs. Whitmarsh. Another prize of $1,000 next week for the best line to complete this limerick. Are you ready, folks? My clothes I can never get white, said Jane, for the soap isn't right. But when in her home she tried Dainty Foam, just finish the limerick and the thousand dollars may be yours. Now remember the dainty foam is the soap with the abundant lather that makes washing a pleasure instead of the daily humdrum. Now we're going to work. We've simply got to think of the last line that will win the prize and we'll sign Aunt Julia's name. Now what are you up to? What do you mean sign Julia's name? So she can pay the bank. Pay what bank? Well, I thought you knew that if Aunt Julia doesn't pay a note at the bank, she'll lose her home. Why doesn't somebody tell me these things? Great suds, we gotta get busy. Let's start thinking. Gee whiz, what chance have we got with people all over the country trying to win that thousand dollars? <laughs> this. My clothes I can never get white, so Jane, for the soap isn't right. But when in her home, she tried dating foam, her washing turned out all right. Well, that's just fair, Dick. I've got one. But when in her home, she tried dating foam, and now I don't have to wash with all my might. Oh, that's oh, that's awful. Awful. I 
I'd fix that if I weren't. <laughs> hey, here's one. But when in her home she tried dainty foam, all her washing problems took flight. Not bad. Not good. How's this sound? Blue Monday's burdens were light. Great suds. It seems as though we could do better than that. Did you hear that? Great suds. Plenty of lather. I got it. Just give me a minute. Here. My clothes I can never get white. Said Jane, for my soap isn't right. But when in her home she tried dainty foam, great suds, she exclaimed in delight. That's oh, it. I'll take you to the post office first thing in the morning. This letter's to Father, and this one's to the Dainty Foam Company. I don't know which will work, but one's going to win that thousand for Aunt Julia. I'll be right back. I uh, beg your pardon. Could you direct me to the residence of Joseph Butterfield? Paul! Oh. Claire, my dear, how are you? This is Paul Darcy, Bill Jones. Hello. How do you do? Uh, Bill, I wonder if you'd mind if I show Paul around a bit. I don't believe he's ever been in the country. Well, of course not. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Claire. Oh, hello, Bill. Hello, Miss Jordan. Oh, Aunt Julia, I'd like you to meet a very good friend of mine, Paul Darcy, Mrs. Julia Jordan. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Paul is a painter. A painter? Well, I'm a painter, too. But Aunt Julia, I... Mrs. Jordan, what I seek to do in my humble way is to preserve in pigments my own conception of metaphysical abstractions. Uh, my, my. It'll be the first time that's been done in Bay's deal. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go, Paul? Yes, let's. been charming knowing you. I likewise. That young man is all choked up with big words that don't say anything. Claire seems to think he's all right. Don't you fret, Bill. My sister went with a painter once, but it didn't last long. She got tired of him? Oh, not exactly. He fell off of a ladder and broke his neck. Pretty grand in the country, isn't it, Paul? Oh, I suppose it is in a raw sort of way, but uh, what does one do? Well, I'll tell you what one does, or even two or three. One works hard and eats the best food in the world and sleeps soundly and meets nice people and laughs and has fun. <laughs> Do you really mean it? You'll see. <laughs> Joe, Paul Darcy. How do you do, Mr. Butterfield? I'm first rate, Mr. Darcy. Oh, uh, Paul is an artist, you know. Maybe he can find something to paint here. Hmm. I'm an artist myself, Mr. Darcy. You are? Yeah. Oh, yes. Manner of speaking, that is. I create things that some folks consider beautiful. Well, surely that's the function of an artist. What do you create? Well, me and folks like me, we create the tomatoes and corn, cotton and tobacco, chickens and sheep. I ain't never seen nothing more beautiful than a fine stand of wheat or a fat heifer or a plump pullet. Now, I ain't saying painting isn't all right in its place, but it's no proper substitute for a leg of lamb or a baked potato or a turkey drumstick. But I guess even artists got to eat regularly. <laughs> that is, they wish they could. So I guess maybe I'm kind of an artist myself. Artist. Artist in living. That's my Uncle Joe. We get her away from that crackpot painter. And now she wants me to take care of half the unfortunates in Baysville. The idea of her asking me to fake our limerick contest and let some widow win it. Why, it sounds exactly like a movie. I wonder why Claire is so interested. She says the widow must pay a note or lose her home. I simply will not stand for any such monkey business. It says here that she knows you. Her name is Julia Jordan. Julia Jordan? Why, she was my best girlfriend. Oh, you've simply got to do it. What? Mm. You too? Say, what's happened to my family anyway?
What's going on? Paul is painting a beautiful creature. Ah, oh, what a beautiful creature. Do you realize, Claire, that I'm preserving this bovine soul for posterity? Time for the Dainty Foam Radio Show. Music, laughter, drama, and the announcement of this week's winner in our limerick contest. Opening the program is your girlfriend, Susan Lamb, better known as Honey Lamb, who will sing for the first time on the air a brand new number called The Land of Nod. When I go to bed at night, I have the strangest dreams. I dream of snakes and bugs and rats and awful things, it seems. But last night was most odd. It was the very last night. I woke in the land of Nod, and this is what I Lollipops in the lake, you could catch them with the rake. They would let them boil in some castor oil, and your tummy never did ache in the land of Nod, where the world's so odd. There were crocodiles snapping fleas off the limbs of trees, and the knock kneed cow gave a big meow when a sandwich asked for some cheese in the land of Nod, where the world's so odd. A hoot owl was growling, they'd mashed his food, and the poor mosquito had a big rubber nose. I saw gollywogs in the air who had caterpillar worms for hair. And a big fat goose with a neck so loose that it stretched away out to there in the land of Nod, where the world's so odd. All the elephants played guitar, and the ladybug smoked cigars. And the tall giraffe gave a big horse laugh when he bumped his head on the stars in the land of Nod, where the world's so odd. Well, a cross-eyed peanut sang, and his big bass voice it rang, till a sour crowd who had the gout took a club and smashed him kerbang in his land of Nod, where the world's so odd. The man in the moon, he slept till noon, then ate Humpty Dumpty with a big leather spoon. But I thought it very strange that cucumbers had dark mange, but they faded away at the break of day, for the Sandman world all changed in the land of Nod. Now Marvin Hatley and his orchestra will play one of his own compositions, Inspirational You. <laughs> If it only would, if it only could happen. Well. I won't have it. 
I simply won't have it. Well, that woman's a friend of the family. But we didn't know that. It's easily the outstanding entry. Further than that, we can use that great Sud slogan in our advertising all over the country. How about the name of the winner? Don't get excited. You'll have it. Now, look here, J.K. Gentlemen, uh, there's been a little delay uh, in choosing the winner of this, uh, the winner of, of this week's contest. But, uh, but we'll have the, the name for you in just a moment. Tonight, Mr. J. K. Day, president of Dainty Foam, will personally announce the winner. Good evening, friends. I take great pleasure in announcing that a check for $1,000 goes out tonight to Mrs. Julia Jordan of Baysville, Iowa. And here's the winning entry. My clothes I can never get white, said Jane, for the soap isn't right. But when in her home she tried dainty foam, great thuds, she exclaimed in delight. Great suds, she exclaimed in delight. It's all a mistake. The money doesn't belong to me. I didn't write that line. Well, we know who did write it. You do? Uncle Joe. Joe, I must say, the idea. Joe Butterfield, what do you mean sending in that line and signing my name to it? How dare you use my name? I know I used your name, Julia, but... Uh, uh, but what? But how would you like to use mine instead? Oh, Joe. My, that was a long time ago. Too long, Julia. Uh, Much too long. Do you think so? <laughs> hmm. I was always pretty sure that one of these days we were going to get this fixed. Mm. 